Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, so this Microsoft whiteboard that I've been using had a major update here recently, so these last few videos in this series are going to be a little weird compared to the rest of them, but uh, it'll still be fine. Okay, the functions fn of x where n and l are integers with uh, l is between 0 and n minus 1 are of interest in the theory of the hydrogen atom. Uh, actually, so these functions are used um, to solve some partial differential equations associated with hydrogen atoms and other atoms that have one valence electron. Uh, show that f2, fx, f3 of x, and f4 of x are as shown, and verify that they are ortho orthogonal. orthogonal. Okay, so here is this uh, f of n. Uh, yeah, so you're going to have to get used to seeing this... Um, green dot moving around since my cursor doesn't show up anymore. Uh, so fn of x is defined like this, l or uh, x to the l minus 1, e to the uh, negative x over 2n, and then this is the uh, Laguerre polynomial. Uh, actually, these are the associated Laguerre polynomials, and we will be taking that one of them, uh, and then x to the, uh, or to the you know, evaluated at x over n. Uh, so for this problem, uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna deal with all this stuff where l equals one, but we'll get to that later. Um, so yeah, the this here is the um, this is the definition of the function. It uh, satisfies this differential equation um, with n and k being those parameters, uh, and then yeah. So here's how you can get them from the uh, normal uh, Laguerre polynomials. Um, so, yeah, and we'll get into all this in a little bit. This is the definition of the gamma function, which will be helpful later. Uh, and then these are the first, well, these are the 0 through 5th um, Laguerre polynomials. So you can get all, all of these from the first two and some recursion relations, but that's not the point of this video, so I didn't want to bore you with that. So we have the first five, or the, the 0 through 5th, and we're going to be using these um, to find, to, we're going to be plugging them into this formula to find the associated Laguerre polynomials that we'll need for the f of n functions. And here are these f of n functions. We just need to show that 2, 3, and 4 are equal to this here. Okay, so let's get in, get right into it. Um, so, uh, the first thing we're going to need is, um, we're going to need the 0, actually, we're going to need the 3, 0 uh, associated Laguerre polynomial. Um, and so we get this by, so this is going to be a negative to the third, because that's what k is, uh, so it's just going to be a negative one, and then this is going to be a d3, dx3, because um, that's also what k is, and then n is zero plus three, so this is going to be the third uh, Laguerre polynomial. So. Uh, what is this going to equal? Um, so we need to take the derivative of this one three times. The 1 drops out the first time. The x term do drops out after the second derivative. The x squared term drops out after the uh, third derivative. So this is the only term that stays all the way through. So it's going to be a negative. Um, then we have a negative. Uh, so we're going to bring a 3 down, bring a 2 down, bring a 1 down, and we're gonna not going to have any x terms left over over 6. So this is going to be 1. The uh, 3, 0 associated Laguerre polynomial is 1. That's an easy polynomial. Let's uh, continue on. We need to find the uh, 3, 1 uh, Laguerre associated Laguerre polynomial next. So k is the same. It's still 3. This is still the third derivative. Uh, but n is different this time. Uh, so n plus k, it's going to be the fourth Laguerre polynomial. So... Uh, let's find this here. We're taking the derivative of this one. The first three terms drop out as usual, and then it's just these last two terms that are left. This one is going to have an x term, and this one is not going to have an x term. So let's find that. Uh, so it's going to be, um, let's see. I'll put this term in front. This is going to be uh, a, it's going, yeah. <clears throat> it's going to be 4 times 3 times 2 over 24. Uh, times x minus two thirds times three times two times one. So what does that end up being? Uh, that is going to be um, 
yeah, so, yeah, it's going to be 4 minus x. And then we're also going to need the, uh, the 3, 2 associated Laguerre polynomial. So this is still the same thing, negative d3 dx3. This is the fifth Laguerre polynomial this time. This is why we needed uh, five of them here. So that's going to be these first three terms are going to drop out. This term is going to not have an x. This is going to have an x. And this is going to have an x squared. So negative uh, 5 times 4 times 3 over 120 x squared. Uh, actually, that's minus. My bad. Don't forget that there. Uh, and then we're going to have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 uh, over 24. x minus 5 thirds times 3 times 2 times 1. So what does this all equal? That's going to equal x squared over 2 minus 5x plus 10. So now we have these three Laguerre polynomials. Um, now we just need to work with this formula for the f of n up there, and uh, we'll see why we needed these in the first place. So uh, f2, actually, OK, so just to make it, just to remind you guys, we're taking these all when l equals 1. So this is going to be uh, so f of 2, or f2 of x is going to be, um, so that's going to be, um, uh, I don't know how I missed this, I'm sorry. This is supposed to be a plus. What, what I was about to write did, didn't make any sense. Uh, so yeah, sorry, my bad, that's supposed, that's, that's supposed to be a plus. So, uh, so yeah, um, uh, yeah, so L is 1, so that's going to be, uh, 2 you know, x squared up on top there, uh, and then n is 2. So that's going to be um, uh, minus x over 2 times 2, which is going to be 4. So um, minus x over 4, and uh, l is equal to 1, so that's going to be a 3 on top there, and l is also equal to 1. So Sorry about that. I got confused there again. Um, I wrote this round down wrong too. I don't know how I did that. Whoops. Okay. Uh, that's supposed to be a l minus one, not an l plus one. So sorry. Sorry about that. I don't know how I uh, wrote that problem or wrote that formula down wrong twice. Uh, so if l is so l is equal to one. Uh, and n is equal to 2, so that's 2 minus 2, so that's equal to 0. So uh, we need to put in the 3, 0 Laguerre polynomial, which, as we found, was just 1. So uh, that we're multiplying it, so that doesn't change this at all. So that's, um, that's f of 2, f2 of x. So And that's what we see down here, so that's good. Um, and then next we'll find f3 of x. And now that we have the right formula, it should be a lot better. So um, L is still the same. L is still 1. So it's going to be x squared. Um, and n is now, th or th yeah, n is now 3. So this is going to be x over 6. And for this one, L is still going to be 3. Or the, the top part is still going to be 3. And uh, n minus L minus 1 is going to be 1. So we need to put in the uh, 3, 1 associated Laguerre polynomial, which we found up there. So that's going to be... Uh, but also, don't forget, um, we're putting in x over n. So wherever there's an x, we need to put in an x over n. So that's going to be uh, 4 minus x over 3. And then finally, uh, which is exactly what we see down here, so that's good. Uh, and then finally, we need to find um, f4 of x. So that's going to be L is still the same. X squared, N is now 4, so that's going to be 8. And then um, we need to put in the 3, 2 uh, associated Laguerre polynomial, which we found. So, uh, but we also need to, don't, 
don't forget about the n. And also don't forget that the n is also different in this case as well. So that's going to be uh, 10 minus 5 fourths x. Um, and then that's going to be plus x squared over 32. Because we have two uh, x over, we, we have an x over 4 that we're actually squaring this time. So, um, and we see that's what we have here too, so that's good. Um, so we have verified that the fn of x are as shown, uh, and now we need to verify that they are orthogonal. So uh, in order to do this, we need to take um, the, actually it asks to find that they're both orthogonal from 0 to infinity, so that's what we're going to do. So we need to take the integral from 0 to infinity of... Um, we'll take the easiest two first, f2 and f3. So um, f2 of x, f3 of x, dx. Uh, and we need to show that it's equal to 0. So um, we'll go ahead and substitute in um, value, you know, uh, the actual function for this. Uh, so that's going to be x squared e to the negative x over 4 um, times x squared e to the negative x over 6 times 4 minus x over 3 dx. So, um, So in order to simplify this, uh, it's going to take a little bit of doing, but it's not going to be uh, completely terrible. Uh, so combining these together, um, when you combine these together, you, you add the exponents on each term. So that's going to be uh, x to the fourth times e to the negative 5x over 12. So that's how you combine those first terms uh, and then all that's left is to do distribute it to these and bring it out. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. 4 e to the negative uh, 5 x 12 over 12 dx and this is going to be minus uh, one third, uh, same thing, except this is x to the fifth instead. Sorry, it's going to get a little crowded here, but I need to leave myself enough room to work out the rest of it and all that. Uh, and this is also dx. Uh, so this is why I had the definition of the gamma function up here. Um, this is almost a gamma function. This is, this is almost, uh, you know, what we need. So how are we going to make this look like a gamma function then? Um, the way I did it is uh, we're going to substitute um, u equals 5x over 12 and du equals 5 over 12 dx. Okay, so um, when we substitute that, this turns into a e to the negative u, which is what we want up here. But um, that turns these x's into uh, 12 over 5, or 12, 12 u over 5. And then not only that, but there's also this 5 twelfths that we have to deal with uh, from the actual substitution itself. So uh, when you combine those all, um, you end up with, um, it's just a constant multiple, which is why this works. So um, you can bring those out in front, uh, but you're going to have uh, the reciprocal of this thing here uh, out in front to the power of 1 times, or 1 plus the exponent of x that you have, or the, the power of x that you have. So um, rewriting it, I'm going to start rewriting it down here. Hopefully I have enough room for the rest of this. Uh, so that's going to be, actually, yeah, um, that's going to be 4, 12, over 5 to the 5th, 
This is this first part. So we have the four that we're bringing out from this, uh, and then the one extra from the substitution for the du. Uh, and then, so that's going to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the, oh, sorry, uh, x to the four. Uh, no, 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 no. It's going to be u to the four uh, e to the negative u du. That whole substitution was so that we could have put it in this form. Uh, and also notice um, there's no funky shenanigans going on with the with these limits. When you plug in 0, uh, you get u equals 0. When you plug in infinity, you get u equals infinity. If the, if the limits were something other than that, then we would probably have to deal with that. But since they're not, we can just leave that part alone. So then minus uh, 1 third... Uh, 5 over 12 uh, to the 6th, because there's 5 from the x to the 5, and then there's another one from the actual substitution. 0 to uh, infinity of u to the 5th, uh, e to the negative u, du. So, um, putting this in gamma function form, what we have is 4... 12 over 5 to the 5th. And uh, so what's what's P in this case? Uh, so if the power of U is 4 the, and the power is uh, P minus 1, then the actual, then, then we must be evaluating this at P equals 5. So uh, P, or gamma function of 5, um, and then let's see, minus one third, yada, 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 all this stuff we've written down before. And this is the gamma function of six. And um, if you want a refresher on the gamma function, I believe I have a video on that. Uh, so there's that. But also, uh, this isn't the main point of the video. The main point of the video isn't. Uh, evaluating all these gamma functions. This is a gamma function of an in, in, of an integer, so it's easy to find. But um, I don't. I'm not going to go through all of the arithmetic. I did verify that these that this was equal to zero. So, um, so what we now know is that f2 and f3 are orthogonal f uh, across zero to infinity. So that's uh, that's good. Now the next thing we need to find is that. Um, we need to verify that all three of them are. So we'll go ahead and do the next easiest pairing, which is f2 and f4. Uh, f Putting f2 with anything is going to be easier in this case since there's not these extra x terms that you have to worry about. Okay, so uh, we're going to do the same thing here. Um, this is equal to x squared e to the negative x over 4 times x squared e to the negative x over 8 times 10 minus 5 fourths x uh, plus x squared over 32. Okay, uh, dx, don't forget the dx. Um, so this needs to be split into three parts, uh, and I'm going to do that down here, I guess, uh, starting over here in this corner. Um, actually, yeah. So this is going to be uh, exactly the same as what we did before. 10, uh, 0 to infinity, x to the fourth. Uh, and then when you combine these two e terms together, uh, what you get is uh, x to the 3 eighths, or x to the negative, uh, x to the negative, no, e to the n uh, negative 3 eighths x. Negative 3 x over 8. And this is dx. This is minus 4 fifths, no, 5 fourths. Uh, 0 to infinity, x to the 5th this time because of that x there, uh, and then the e term is the same, dx. 
And then the last part is 1 over 32, 0 to infinity, x5, or x to the 6, my bad, 3 over 8, dx. So, um, we're going to be doing the exact same procedure that we did before. Uh, so, uh, yes, let's see. Yeah, so the same procedure that we did before, this is just going to be, um, the instead of doing this u substitution, we're doing the substitution u equals 3 eighths x. So, but it's going to lead to the same result. I'm not going to go through all of the, uh, all of the details again. Instead, we're just going to go straight to 10, uh, 8 thirds to the fifth power, there's four from the, um, there's four from the x to the four, and then the other from the substitution, uh, and that's going to be gamma of five, and minus five fourths, um, and for the record, it's not like any of these numbers look especially clean. Uh, when I did solve this out beforehand, uh, it's ju it just leads to a whole bunch of, at least a whole bunch of fractions, but a whole bunch of messy fractions that aren't really worth dealing with. So, uh, and then there's uh, seven of these here, gamma of seven. And if you plug this all into your calculator again, let me make sure that I wrote this down correctly. Um, checking my work. Yep, this is also equal to zero. Uh, so that means that f f two and f four are also orthogonal. Uh, and then finally, all we have to do is show that uh, f three and f four are also orthogonal. So we just need to show that the integral from zero to infinity is the same as zero. Uh, so, so that's going to be x squared e to the negative x over 6, uh, and that's going to be times 4 minus x third, or 1 third x, I mean, uh, x squared e to the negative 1 over 8 x 10 minus 5x over 4 plus x squared over 32 dx. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to skip straight to the gamma function uh, terms since I'm kind of running out of room here. Um, so you have to foil these out. There's a lot of terms. I really can't. I really can't write it in this amount of space that I have. Uh, so the four times the ten, you get a forty. Um, when you multiply the powers of x together, uh, or the power the e to the you know the, when you multiply the e terms together, uh, what you get is uh, e to the seven x over twenty four. So we're gonna do the same substitution as before. So uh, and then also. We have four, uh, four powers of x in this term, so I mean you can see how this is going to work from the other parts that we did. I just don't have room to write it again, so it's going to be five because we had four x powers and substitution, uh, and then the next term is going to be um, the x term. So we have the we have this term multiplied by that term, uh, which gets us an x term, and we have this term multiplied by that term, which gives us an x term. Uh, that ends up being uh, 25 thirds x's. Uh, so then we have the same substitution, uh, which is going to give us six of them. Uh, and I didn't write this in here. Sorry. I, that's times, this is really bad, uh, gamma function of five. So that, that that's supposed to go right there. Um, sorry about that. So, uh, this is gamma function of 6. Um, and then, uh, for this, for the next term, we have the, uh, this x squared times the 4, which gives us some x squares terms. 
Uh, and then we also have the x times the x terms, which give us some x squared terms. So that ends up being plus uh, 13, 24 over uh, 24, or times 24 over 7 to the 7th, gamma function of 7. And then finally, we have the uh, this term, the x term over here times the x squared term over there, which gives us x cubed terms. Um, that is negative 96, or negative 1 over 96, 24 sevenths, 8, gamma function of 8. And this also equals 0 uh, when you plug in everything. We used up the entire screen on this one. This is kind of a long problem, um, but this is actually one of the more, like this is a, pre uh, this is a pretty practical, um, practically based physics problem. Uh, so, uh, going on from this, we have we're gonna have a couple, um, couple videos on partial differential equations, which is actually one of the main applications of these um, Laguerre polynomials and such. Um, I'm not going to have a video next week because of Thanksgiving break, but then after that, I hope to see you in my next video where we're going to be taking on some partial differential equations. Thank you.